My Otaku Computer Science PhD friend of mine and I took an AI course in fall of 2009. This video is the AI to our final project. We decided to do the Mario AI 2009 competition, which has the following webpage. We appreciate all the efforts from the various parties that made it possible. The idea of doing this project started when we saw the other rather popular Mario AI floating around the internet. So we set this competition as our final project, and we were determined to adhere to all the rules. Now Robin Bumgarden is the original creator of the popular version of Mario AI, which can be seen on YouTube, and he is the winner of both sections of the Mario AI 2009 competition, and it's technically rightfully so. I'd also like to say he did a great job, his AI is awesome to watch, and the interest that is brought to the AI community is wonderful. There is, however, one argument I have against his implementation, but it isn't entirely his fault. The rules could have been more explicit, but since this is the first year for this type of competition, I'm guessing no one expected what has occurred to have happened. The first thing to understand is that Mario can't see everything we can see. Mario is only capable of seeing what is inside the black box. In this image, it is pretty small, just a 7x7, but the real box is 22x22. In this next image, you can see an example of the 22x22 box. However, notice that it ends before the top of the screen. This black box grid is Mario's observation of the world, and is supposed to be the only information that Mario has about the world. Now the rules say contestants are permitted to use only the information available from the environment interface. What this translates to is, we can use information that Mario gets from the 22 by 22 box. Those boxes contain information like whether or not a turtle is in the box, or if it is ground or air, or whatever else have you. The main point of this is to prevent people from having access to the engine information itself. Why is it bad to have access to the engine? Well, because at that stage it's no longer really AI. The reason it's no longer AI is because with engine data, Mario can essentially see into the future. He could plan every single motion path for every single thing in the game and then calculate the perfect carefree path to navigate it all. The reason this isn't AI is because in the real world, we don't know the future. So a robot can't look at a room and know exactly where everything will be in the future. Observation is one of the significant problems in AI, hence the 22 by 22 block for observation. The problem with the 22 by 22 block is this case. Notice how the Goomba on the right is between two blocks. Is he in the left one or the right one? Well, that depends. Where is the point of recognition for each block? The top left corner, the bottom right, the center? Actually, I'm not completely certain, but my first assumption was the top left corner because that is how most graphic applications do it. In this next image, we placed a cross at Mario's position, which is at the center of the bottom of Mario's block, which is the object's position in pixel space. Mario, however, doesn't know pixel space. He only knows the observation space, which is the 22 by 22 box grid. In this case, the problem becomes a sampling problem, because Mario only knows about 22 times 22 locations, or 484 positions. Going back to the previous image, notice how the top of the screen is not covered with black boxes. This means Mario can't actually see that portion of the screen, so he has no idea what is there. With such sparse information, it is difficult to get Mario to plan out a perfect flawless path. The Goomba in this image could be in the left box or the right one. Mario doesn't know for sure, so when using just the observation grid, i.e. the black box grid, Mario might make mistakes. He may get hit, he may try to jump one pixel too late, or make other miscalculations. However, our friend Robin seemed to avoid this case. His Mario runs perfect with the precision of a laser-guided missile. So as we began to run into various problems coding our Mario AI using only the observation class, we decided to take a look at how Robin solved these seemingly impossible problems, specifically the sampling problem. Unfortunately, Robin didn't really fix those problems either. It is arguable, but he took a potentially better route. Essentially, he avoided the observation class altogether and ignored the 22 by 22 black box grid. But wait a second, that is the only insight to how Mario can see. How can you not use that? The rules state that you cannot use any of the classes that contain engine information. Primarily this means the classes contained in the engine level folder, because that is where all the information about the game is stored, the current position of each enemy, their trajectory, their type, etc. Every single detail about what is on the screen and what will be on the screen in the future can be easily determined with the use of these classes, and the main point is to restrict each AI to what can be determined from the observation class. Accessing the level scene class and a Mario class isn't legitimate and would be considered cheating, mainly because in a real world situation, an AI agent would not have that information either. It would only know what it can observe. So what our friend Robin decided to do was not to use those classes. 
Instead, he decided to copy all of the code from those classes and create his own version of them. So level scene class exists and runs the engine. Then we have Robin's level scene class, which is the exact same code but is no longer the level scene class. It is Robin's level scene class, and it is saved in a different folder. All the information is the same. So when he needs to get some highly detailed information to make Mario navigate the level like a laser-guided super plumber, he accesses the information in Robin's level scene class and can have all the information he would ever need. It is technically not cheating because he isn't using the level scene or other related classes, but he absolutely has the exact same information. For those of you who aren't programmers, this would be equivalent of getting a copy of a history exam, going to Kinko's, photocopying it without ever looking at it, returning the original exam to the teacher, then during the exam, whipping out your copy of the exam and proceed to score a perfect grade. Now technically Robin hasn't cheated because the competition never stated that you couldn't do that. But I argue it is against the spirit of the competition, and he has won on a technicality. His solution would never work in a real-world situation because AI agents just don't have that level of flawless understanding of every single situation that could occur in the real world. Nevertheless, the way his Mario just manhandles and assassinates the enemy is pretty damn cool. In our version of the Mario AI, we stayed strictly within the confines of the rules and what we felt was implied but not stated. And thus our Mario only makes use of information from the observation class, meaning our Mario only knows what is inside the black box grid. From there, everything else Mario considers is calculated via interpolation and mathematical best guesses. Like Robin, we also made use of a star search algorithm, but since observation has a sampling problem, this Mario isn't as flawless, but still pretty good. The red lines show the various paths that Mario considers when calculating his function, <clears throat> and the heuristic for Mario, or Mario's goal, is to maximize the distance traveled to the right hand of the screen. Because of the way Infinite Mario in this competition was implemented, it is pretty difficult to make complex heuristic functions. Robin states on his webpage that it took 20 to 30 hours to write his AI, and he has calculated a fairly complex heuristic function which does his Mario well. When dealing with just the observation class and interpolating and projecting future positions of objects in the world, our implementation took considerably longer and was likely around 80 to 100 hours of work. We ran into an ample amount of non-AI related problems, mainly regarding the implementation of how Infinite Mario and the observation class work. Here we have drawn red boxes around where Mario projects the enemies will be in the future based on their previous and current positions. Notice the boxes aren't perfect, which is why Mario will occasionally get hit by an enemy. In future competitions for Mario AI, we would like to see Mario have access to the full screen, just like normal human players do. And rather than having the sparse sampling grid, i.e. the 22x22 observation class, having real world position information would make much more sense. That would make the main purpose of the competition more geared towards AI related problems rather than overcoming implementation and sampling problems.